The first NCAA title team of the 2010s felt like a part of a bygone era in record time. Duke's grizzled veterans gave way to Kentucky's freshman heavy lineup in just two years. The one and done era was fully upon us in this new decade. And Coach K, he was ready to adapt. Mike Krzyzewski said Duke looks for three equally important things in building all their squads. Enough talent to help the team win an ACC championship and thus have a chance in the big dance. The academic preparedness to not struggle in class at an elite university. And good character, asking questions like, do these recruits listen to their parents and make eye contact with their coaches? What they look for has never changed, but who they consider, that certainly has. We never recruited guys that we thought were gonna go straight into the pros. But then with the one and done, the guys who were gonna go straight in the pros had to go to school for a year. So we still didn't recruit that group for a few years, but we were competing against them. I remember a conversation as the staff's coach saying, look, we're either gonna get them or we're gonna have to play against them. So it started as a slow drip. We actually tried to get John Wall. I don't know if people remember that. We actually tried to get him. We got in on him late. That wasn't gonna work out, but that was the initial like, Hello, like we are now recruiting those types of guys. And then we ended up getting Kyrie and then they, you know, you end up getting Austin Rivers the next year and then Jabari and then the whole thing exploded. Kyrie Irving was the first clear one and done player in Duke's history. Kyrie was a star, but injuries limited him to just 11 games for the Blue Devils. Still, his recruitment was an illustration that Coach K wasn't stuck in the past and maybe he never was. Yeah, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy, that's, that, that's not the case. Grand Hill was in the mid-90s or early 90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where it would be the best decision for them to go. In the 90s, Coach K wouldn't hang a Final Four banner, an ACC Championship banner, if the entire roster hadn't graduated. I think the turning point came when he knew it wasn't going away and a lot of really good players and really good guys, good students that were one and done quality players wanted to come to Duke. You wouldn't turn down someone at genius level in any other endeavor. Like you wouldn't turn down a genius level scientist or a genius level uh, musician because heck they might, you know, they might, the, the musician might go to Carnegie Hall early. Now, just because you want the absolute best players in the country doesn't mean you're going to get them. One key to Coach K unlocking the new world was making the U.S. national team the undisputed best in the world once again. Now, that wasn't a foregone conclusion when he took the Team USA job. Me, Melo, D. Wade, and, and LeBron were a part of that, that 2004 team that went to uh, Athens, Greece, and we lost to Argentina. That team was in such disarray. We had Steph Marbury, and we had Allen Iverson, and we had Lay Brown. There was all this different weird energy on that team, and we just weren't a team. One of the greatest assets and abilities that Coach K has, he's able to bring people from wherever you're from, put them together in a short period of time and have the same goal in mind, where we sacrifice for the collective, right? And so think about, you put together 12 NBA All-Stars in a short period of time to win a gold medal, what better guy to have than Coach K? There is no better guy. But that doesn't mean Coach K didn't learn a lot during those years. To be with all those top, the top players, to learn from Kobe Bryant and Jason Kidd and LeBron and Carmelo and Chris Paul and Durant and all those guys. You learn best practices, you learn different terminology. I incorporated a number of these things in my Duke program. And with those global superstars buying in, Coach K had even more credibility back on campus. Do you not think that we have a tape session with Lamar Odom and Chauncey Billups and Durant and talking about the same things? It's the way the game is played. That's a pro game. With this mutually beneficial relationship going strong, it was time to go get some dudes. Irving, Rivers, and Parker, they were the key youngsters early in the shift. But the 2014 recruiting class was a game changer for Duke as they landed two of the top four prospects in the country and a total of four in the top 21 of the ESPN 100. Number one was Jaleel Okafor, an old school post player with great footwork and a feathery touch. He was a consensus first team All-American and the conference player of the year as a freshman. 
Okafor, look at him dribble out of it, switch hands, and lay it in. Are you kidding? Heis Jones, the point man for Minnesota, anchored Duke's defense and ran the show on the other end. That earned him an All-ACC freshman team honor and a 2015 NCAA Tournament Most Outstanding Player Award, too. Justice Winslow, a dynamic wing who played elite defense and developed a strong offensive game to match, made the ACC All-Freshman and NCAA All-Tournament teams. And Grayson Allen, the heir to the Christian Leitner, J.J. Redick, hateable Dookie throne. Didn't start a single game his first year, but came up huge when it mattered most. We'll come back to that. But for all that star power, the 2018 class was on an entirely different plane. The top three players in the ESPN 100 chose Duke, as did number 17, just for good measure. Now, how was Coach K, the absolute master of developing relationships, changing his approach with this new group? I have a great bond with my freshmen, and you know, when we started getting kids who weren't here long, whether it be one or two years, we try to develop a different way of how, not just in recruiting, but what we do after a kid commits to get to know them more because we wouldn't have a four-year period to get to know them. America had already gotten to know Zion Williamson. At just 17, he had a social media following of well over one million people. At a game I called in his native South Carolina, they showed Zion on the video board and 20,000 Gamecock fans chanted the name of a then high school junior in hopes of that outpouring of love will get him to stay home for college. But he outperformed even the most lofty expectations. Now, I know there's no way you forgot this squad's college debut. A 118-84 win over Kentucky, Zion went for 28 points, 10 of 12 from the floor, and threw a dime that was just absurd and showed he was more than just an athlete. Of course, he ended up being the National Player of the Year and eventual number one pick. And even brought a former president courtside for one of college basketball's most surreal moments of the decade. I mean, his, his shoe blew apart. That's unbelievable. He broke his shoe with his own foot. R.J. Barrett, admittedly not the most efficient scorer in college, but all he did was total 860 points in his lone season, only behind J.J. Redick's senior campaign for the highest scoring season in Duke history. Cam Reddish never consistently found his shooting rhythm, but he did rack up eight games of 20-plus points, including a buzzer-beating tray to beat Florida State on the road. Last but not least from this crew, Trey Jones, like his brother before him, a defensive-minded floor general. He jumped from the conference all-freshman team to ACC Player of the Year in 2020, as the only one of this core four to stick around for a second season at Duke. The 2014-15 team provided a roadmap for how these teams could succeed. Let the stars be stars on offense, but make sure they stay committed on the defensive end. I thought we were a good defensive team except for two weeks in early January. But in, in late February and, and throughout March and April, we were the best defensive team in the country. The hardest thing to do with freshmen is teach them how to guard. Chris Patola called Coach K the greatest coach of man-to-man -man defense the college basketball has ever seen. But the instinctive elements, the rotations, communication that take years to bear fruit, haven't really translated in the one-and-done era. Teams that struggled to meet the standard, like the Marvin Bagley-led 2017-18 squad, resorted to playing zone. But getting it right in their 2015 tourney run helped make history. Even with the shift to younger teams, Duke has largely been able to preserve its winning culture without upperclassmen to pass it down. Sure, there have been some drawbacks with veteran teams like Virginia, North Carolina, Florida State winning the lion's share of ACC regular season and tournament titles in recent years. But that 2015 team benefited from the culmination of Coach K's greatest skills, adaptability, relatability, leadership, and belief. 15 to him was so important because it validated his recruiting, this new recruiting strategy of recruiting freshmen. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current, what music. You know, we never even played music before a game. And all of a sudden, we're getting ready in the NCAA tournament, and we're listening to, you know, to Meek Mill, Dreams and Nightmares, and Coach is in the back bopping his head. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what is, what alternate universe are we in right now? But it's a credit to Coach and just the genius that's in him. Now the soundtrack and keeping things a little bit looser, that was new. But the legendary basketball mind, that was always the same. Duke took down a veteran and postseason tested Wisconsin team in the NCAA final behind, of course. Grayson Allen, a superstar, bursting onto the scene in the national title game. He'll go to the line for one more. Allen proved to be a throwback, the rare elite player who stayed in school for four years. He knew how valuable his time with Coach K would be to him, not just getting to the league, but staying there. 
He takes on so many different forms. He's the coach who's going to be hard on you, and then he's the mentor that'll give you the best life advice you've ever heard, and then he can also be your friend and crack jokes with you. And that's the prevailing sentiment about Coach K, his unparalleled people skills. He is the greatest relationship guy that I've ever been around. And I've been around a lot of great leaders, both in the military and in basketball. He's the best at relationships. His resume speaks for itself. Most wins, most first round draft picks produced, second most national championships. But the wisdom it takes to constantly evaluate yourself, your perspective, your strategies, while never compromising your values on or off the court, that's a special gift. The man he is, the people he molded, and the imprint he left on the world of basketball. It's truly unique. He's absolutely the GOAT. But humility won't let him say that. My buddies in Chicago that I grew up at, Mo and the guys, they always tell me, you've never worked a day in your life. And I said, you know, you're right. I've loved what I've done every day of my life. I've done what I wanted to do, coach. And for some reason, it got to this level. Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. I'm a really lucky guy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.